introduction to Django. Hello guys, welcome from Code Pivot. You can contact us at codepivot.com, Instagram as codepivot.ng. Now, I'll be introducing you to Django. Now, what is Django? What is Django? Django, Django is an high level Python web framework, a framework that encourages rapid development in pragmatic design. It's actually built by experienced developer. The framework that is very good for building web applications. Mostly it's just for building web applications. It's a web framework by Python. Python is, we all know that Python is a very good programming language. It's one of the best programming language back then in 2020, 2021. Now, advantages of Django. Django is very, very fast. It has its own server, its web server built-in interface. It allows easy compiling of code and also interpreting of code. Make it fast for Django to be able to read the code. When it's a it makes it faster than the server. You can be able to do lots of things very fast. Also, we have security. Django framework is made by the world based web developers who have a great experience and knowledge. So, that leaves a very small possibility of security even in the user interface. Like Laravel framework in PHP, transmits data via get network, and even the parts of which things are available, which is a very high risk. But Django takes care of this inbuilt. Also, use the get method to transmit the data or the password and all the important information automatically encrypts with a long security tag. Even in the Django database, we cannot see the password. Yeah, other advantages of Django is scalability. Django is highly scalable. scalable. Now, let's see. Django has been made in such a way that to be able to undo any kind of additional hardware, this advantage is the main reason as to why the busiest sites of the world. Like Instagram, in interest, this course, it is see use the Django framework. Yeah, they actually use the Django framework to search it up on the internet. Django is based on loosely coupled architecture, which provides its functionality to add hardware at any point in components and to manage that change and have little to no effect on other components, which is seriously not the case in any other framework. And Django is versatile, it can use for so many things, social network, blogs weather application, to application, lots and lots of things. Now, the most important part which we'll be talking about today is the Django architecture. Yeah, the Django architecture. Django actually use MVC, model view template. But the one you're seeing on the screen is MVC, model view controller or model controller view, whatever. So this model view controller is actually built inside model view template. So before we can talk about model view templates, we have to talk about model view controller. Now, but in the architecture, there are so many, so many advantages. The MVT pattern is used in the terminology template for views and views for controller. Temperature relates to the view in the MVC pattern as it refers to the presentation layer that manages the presentation logic in the framework as it essentially controls the content, the display, and how to display it for the user. Thus, our Python code will be in views and model and HTML code will be in template. So let me explain this better to you so you can understand. It's actually quite confusing. Now, we have our model. Our model, like those things we already set down for our data, the way our data is built, the name, text, username, password, those are our models. The way our data is going to be structured in the database, those are our models. We, do, we have to do data modeling. We have our controller, that has to serve the web server interface, they go and do all that for us. And we have our view, this is what the user see. Now the controller takes data from the model and it on the view, the model view controller. Now, in Django MVT, model view templates, if the template relies so much on the view, that is, when you want to display the view, you have to use the template. The template consists of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So now, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, the controller is going to impute those data inside HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So that display it directly, just as any command line interface. So now this HTML, CSS and JavaScript our template which is inbuilt in the view. As a Django is this model view template. So if you need more to read up on that, I'll put the link in the description for you to read more on that. We also have the table to compare data between Django Flux and Laravel. Now Django, when it comes to flexibility, Django is fully future powered Flux is fully flexible and Laravel is also fully flexible. Now when I mean future part, that is it has been packed with all the features that it needs. You cannot change the way that Django is written, the structure, the file type. If it changes, you have lots of errors. It's going to be shouting at you, lots of errors. 
you have to build up your body. So you don't have one to change it at all. Because it's going to break down all your body. When it comes to side, then go is a full stack web window that is to handle body back end at the front end. That's a way of starting static files, your CSS, your script. Now, Flux is just a web server gateway in framework. It is a Flux, it's only, it's only the connection between the server and the client. That's what Flux basically does, just the connection between the server and the client. Now, Laravel is also a fully stack web framework that is and just both the front end and the back end. Now, they are working now. This is actually is an advantage for Django. Django is monolithic in the sense that Django does not allow changes. I said that earlier, it doesn't allow changes. In his code, it's the way it has been written, no change in file time, the way it files it. It doesn't allow change the name of files because when you change the name of files, then you can find what's left of settings, the way they did it. And what Flux is diverse, you can do your thing anyhow, change the way you do your code and you still run very well. So that's actually just a little way to compare the three of them. So now, the average salary of a Django developer is $63,000. This is not actually the salary. It's just an average, it can either be higher or lower, but that's actually a huge number, this is $3,000. So, this is actually, so when you are considering to become a Django developer, this is actually a salary you should be expecting. Now, the, we have 2,187 companies that are using Django, and lots and lots and lots of users, Django has like 87% total success. Now, the disadvantage of Django, Django is monolithic. When I mean monolithic, I already said that earlier when we were comparing. Doesn't allow changes in its file, doesn't allow any change in its file for the name, the directory, the way the file is built, the way the code is compiled. It doesn't allow those changes, even not the code just breaks down. Now, Django is not for smaller projects, it's actually made for big, big projects because of the way the number of files that are. Django has lots of files, creation, virtual environments, space, lots of things you have to do. Lots. So, Django has just basically built for big projects. You cannot be using Django for smaller projects because of time. And use this regular expression for new URLs. That will actually be explained later in the course. Now, website category where Django is being used. When it comes to business and industry, it's that 19.89%. You'll see all of them. Others include places like blog, social network, and some other things. Now, at the down part, we have numbers of websites built to Django by hundred. In the US, we have 14,000 websites built. Germany, we have 2,000 builds, Russia, we have 12,000 builds, UK, 2,000, and so on and so forth. We go to read lots of articles to know more about Django. This is just like a first introduction to Django. Now, thank you for sticking around with me. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You can just feel free to comment. You can find, you can contact us at Code Pivot NG, my Instagram, Twitter at Code Pivot, 